Welcome to another Cartney scam and ripoff warning video. Our topic today is before you buy a music industry directory or contact list. Our guest today is David Wimble. Hi everyone, my name is David Wimble. I've been publishing the Indie Bible for 23 years actually. And uh, it was created initially as a, a response I had as an artist when I was looking for places to promote my music. And uh, I found that there was a lot of outdated information online. And there were a few directories at that time and they weren't very reliable. It's like something someone put together in an afternoon. And uh, so accidentally I created the Indie Bible and I've been doing it now for 23 years. So David, what are the first things that artists and songwriters should know before buying a directory or a contact list? Uh, well, the, the most unfortunate thing about the internet is um, if you have a bit of uh, capability with uh, programming skills, you can create a beautiful website that is a total scam. Um, we've experienced ourselves, especially these last few years, that people that are taking our information and reselling it. To find still a, the, the tried and true way of finding out if something is legitimate is do your due diligence online look for reviews of the particular directory that you're uh, concerned about or, or considering purchasing. Um, again, when, you when it comes to reviews, as everybody knows, it uses Amazon. Reviews aren't trustworthy either. So a lot of times the reviews on the, on the particular website, of course, if it's, a, if it's a scammy sort of a setup, the reviews are going to be uh, uh, you know, made up as well. So you have to kind of go out, uh, find out, go on the internet, find out reviews. Uh, there'll be, often there'll be comments in, in online communities about such and such a directory. So at least, you know, put a, put a little bit of time into, to do that, at least to, to read some reviews, to find out some comments. Comments, of course, you know, as again, as we all know with the internet or on YouTube, people just like to go out and they like, they like to, to snipe, you know, that they, they kind of get their aggressions out. So what you need to do is kind of get a little body of information and kind of discern from that, uh, take the, the, the highs and the lows out of it. Does this seem like a legitimate directory to purchase? Some directories seem to be filled with fluff. I'm referring to businesses and people that don't really exist or people who don't want to be contacted by indie artists. How do you find the contacts in the Indie Bible? Well, there's two ways that we, we uh, list a company. Of course, someone gets in touch with us and says, please list us. The second is we just go out and, and do and, and just find people. But of course, the prerequisite has to be that they are open to solicitations uh, directly from independent artists. So in other words, none of these places that uh, unsolicited music or you have to get your manager to contact us or you have to get your lawyer to contact us. It's all places that uh, uh, it's, it's very DIY. Uh, you, you have our contacts and everyone in there, uh, you can contact directly, again, the way they ask you to. If we uh, waited for responses from people, like for permission to, you know, to list them, uh, I'd still be waiting for people, uh, you know, responding to the first edition. It's, uh, it's the music business, right? So we can never forget that. Throughout the years, we've had a lot of competition. And the reason the competition has never stayed around is because uh, research is unbelievably hard. Uh, it's, you know, let's take, for example, we have 9,000 listings in just our, our first directory of the Indie Bible. So it's fine and dandy to find those 9,000 listings uh, with legitimate contact information, everybody's happy. But two months from that point, a lot of those, not a lot, of, let's say a small percentage of those listings are, are no longer valid. You go a year from there and you're probably looking at about 10%. So you're looking at 900 listings uh, have either are defunct or they've moved or something has changed, it has to be updated. So the real uh, quality that, that shines in a good directory is that it's continually updated. So if somebody's put out a directory uh, published in, in 2016 with all sorts of great information, but they haven't updated it since then, 
that directory is essentially useless. Even if it was last updated in 2020, it's, it's pretty in pretty rough shape. So the, the companies that are going to survive and provide you with the best product, they update their directories at least every year. So that's one thing you want to find out. When has this been updated last? Se uh, secondly, probably the first thing you notice is going to be the price. That's uh, going to be a factor. But if, you know, again, if, if um, you go on Fiverr.com or something and someone's got a, like a directory, well, you, you kind of kind of get what you pay for. If it is a really legitimate directory that, and, and it kind of uh, has what you want in it, then it's worth $100, $150, whatever they're charging. But that's a big if. It has to be have that quality. Is it uh, relevant data? Has it been updated lately? And, um, and also, a lot of times, what kind of contact information is it? Uh, I know, especially when the, the Spotify directories first started coming out, um, they would just have, you know, Fred at Spotify.com for, for one of the Spotify curators. So you want kind of evidence, like what's the evidence that this information they're giving me is actually legitimate and they're not just uh, something they, they bought a list or they, they just kind of, they're, they're, they're making stuff up. So you want to check the integrity of the listings, like what's involved. Is there a social media uh, with the listings? Is there a, a specific contact person? And uh, yeah, but you need to find out that stuff. What are some other warning signs that a directory may not be legitimate? If it looks before buying, um, again, people are really, really, and I'm, I'm just talking about our directory being pirated. Uh, you know, in the world uh, we live now where you can just get templates, so you can get like a, a GoDaddy account and they have all sorts of templates. You can have a beautiful website like in 10 minutes. So, and, you know, you throw in the phony reviews, um, it's just really difficult. I, I don't really know of any telltale signs. Um, I would check out, you know, their their privacy policies and stuff. What we found in the past is people tend to, you know, these people that are pirating uh, different directories are, are kind of running scams. Is for the privacy and uh, and other legal, de they just copy and paste something from another website and dump it in there. So I, that would be a place to kind of, you know, do some detective work, kind of check that out. But overall, it's really difficult. Um, you can, one way would be to contact them, just simply contact them, say, I just have a question about your directory. What we found is that people that do run pirate, we'll call, I'll just call them pirate websites that are, 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 are uh, illegitimate websites. They won't get back to you because they've kind of got this as a, as a as like a side kind of game they play. Uh, so uh, even if it's like you, you know, obviously I wouldn't contact somebody with my Indie Bible address, but I'll contact them from my wife's address and just say, yeah, I just had a few questions about your directory and never has any of them ever got back to me. So I think that's just part of their scam is if they're just going to put it up there, if people want to pay for it, that's great, but they're not going to respond to anything. So if it's, especially if it's pricey, just send them an email. Yeah, I have a few questions about your directory and uh, see what happens. Yeah, it, again, we go back to just the, the way that the internet's kind of like the Wild West. And you can make a really nice website and you can have beautiful graphics and say the, you know, for $250 and we've got uh, 10,000 contacts. And it can be, well, we actually had a, that experience ourselves is, um, there was this lady from uh, Las Vegas, a, a, an artist, and she took uh, information from like four of our directories and just uh, took the time to reconfigure it so that it looked like her packaging. But then she made a series of videos. And in the video, she was telling people how hard she worked to uh, to make these directories and how, uh, you know, how much of an effort was put in. Uh, and so we, we had to, to hire a lawyer. We had no choice. Um, so, I mean, there is no limits to what people will do out there. So again, the best defense you have is your own research and, um, and just, uh, you know, do as, do as much as you can, especially if you're going to be spending a lot of money over a hundred dollars for a directory. Okay. So the artist finds and buys the perfect directory. 
What's the best way for them to approach the people who are listed? Well, this is kind of like my, uh, my, my grail quest in life is, is getting people to understand the simple principle is that the way you contact the different um, curators, say it's a blogger or a Spotify curator or a label, the way to contact them is simply the way they ask you to contact them. Because mostly 90% of the time when you go to a blog or you go to a label or a radio station, they're saying, this is how we want to be contacted. Don't send us a, a, an email with an attachment. Don't phone us. Do send us a, a, a streaming link to your SoundClouders. They're, they're telling you. So the, the idea of just sending a generic blast to everybody is just not going to work. You'll come out far. It won't contact as many people by, by not sending a blast or by sending out your template to everybody. But the time it takes to find out, okay, how does this person want to be contacted? Uh, that will put you at the front of the line. So they're they're getting bombarded every week with tons of music. And they said, holy, wow, this person took the time to find out my name. They took the time to find out a little bit about what I do. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to respond to this person. Um, and it's really hard. It's a hard sell, but I'm never going to stop trying to uh, to get the message across. The top uh, negative response we get is this thing doesn't work. And um, I had just a, a person last week say this thing doesn't work. Well, this thing is contact information for for different services. And it's how they want to be contacted. That's the service we provide. Now, how you get in touch with them is that's the the rub, right? That's where the issue is. Uh, what I'll do, what I've done over the years, I said, you know, send me, send me what you're selling, sending these people. And I take a look at it. And of course, it's a dog's breakfast. It's everything you wouldn't want to see if you're, if you're, if you're a blogger or a curator uh, and this person sends you this. It's just a mess. Um, and a lot of times it's like a really um, difficult thing for musicians to understand is you're not doing the blogger or the curator or the label a favor. They're doing you a favor by taking you on. So if you approach them like, you know what, uh, I don't mind if you if you put my song in your playlist, um, you're going to get the response of none, no response, because uh, these people are, are, are bombarded. You know, they love music, but part of their job is they are swamped every day with music. So they've got to sift through all this music. And someone's just saying, you know what, I'm, I'm fantastic and I you know, I can really beef up your playlist. Uh, they don't want that. They want someone that's taken the time to find out my name's Joe or Mary, the type of music I play. That first of all, like, uh, if you talk to any, like Vinny would know this, or you would know this, I'm talking to you. Um, if you talk to a radio host or a blogger or a curator, they will tell you they're lucky if they get 50% of the submissions they get is the actual music that they play. They're just getting blasted from four corners of the, the music world. So, uh, yeah, so just uh, keep that in mind. It's, it's, it, be respectful when you're contacting these people. Yeah, well, yeah I'm, well, I'm not even talking about the quality of the music. I'm just talking about the approach. Yeah, the quality of the music is, that's another issue with any anyone in the arts. I mean, if you write a book or if you, if you paint a painting, uh, you, you love it as the artist, or if you write a song, you, you love it. This is fantastic. But what's the reality? What's the reality out there in the in the real world? Uh, I, I went, I used to go to music conferences a lot and they'd have those demo, what they call them demo derbies or whatever they called them, where you would have a panel of people and uh, people would put in their demo and, and the panel would listen to the song. So I was on one of those one time it was brutal. <laughs> I never, I never did it again. It was just, uh, the people I was with, they were, you know, they'd done it before, of course, and they were pretty direct. And, um, uh, it, it's devastating for someone that thinks, oh, they're going to love this. And then the reality comes out and it's just shattering. And it's like, well, I'm never doing this again. So yes, the, the music is of course a key, key element. That concludes our video titled, Before You Buy a Contact List or Directory. We want to thank David Wimble, the founder of the Indie Bible, for sharing his expertise and insights with us. 